gone. All right, here we go. And some say forgotten. All I can do is just keep praying and keep praying and hoping that I get some answers. That's it. That's all. A year since little Relisha Rudd vanished, what's been done to find her? We have exhausted a lot of resources, and we will continue to do so. Every child matters to us. And what's been done to protect other homeless children? And are you confident that kids are safer this year compared to what they were a year ago when Relisha Rudd went missing? Uh, I, I have every confidence that we're exercising more oversight. But are they safer? I have answered your question. America Tonight investigates the search for Relisha. Thanks for joining us for this special report. I'm Joey Chen. It is horrifying to know that in a typical year, over 100 children in this country are kidnapped. What's even more shocking to us is that this city, the seat of the nation's power, has proven itself powerless to protect the most vulnerable of its children, the homeless. The disappearance of eight-year-old Relisha Rudd last winter revealed just how broken Washington, D.C.'s safety net is. Even now, a full year later, no one can explain what happened to her. America Tonight's Lori Jane Gleha has been following Relisha's story since the child vanished. And she begins our report with an investigation into her final steps. It's painful. It's hurtful. It's too quiet in my house. I'm not used to this. I don't have anybody to talk to like I normally do. My daughter will be that person, and she's not here right now. Right now, no one seems to know where Relisha Rudd is. And for the last year, if detectives had any clues about the nine-year-old's whereabouts... Just take one. Help us find Relisha. They haven't shared them with the little girl's mother, Shamika Young. All I can do is just keep praying and keep praying and hoping that I get some answers. That's it. That's all. Young has been praying on it for 12 long months. She and her longtime boyfriend, Antonio Wheeler, were living with their family at D.C. General, a cramped homeless facility in the nation's capital, when Shamika's only daughter, Relisha Rudd, went missing. Relisha loved dancing, cheerleading, art projects, and going to school. What else makes me smile about her is her, her good, smart brain. I've never seen a nine-year-old speak so many big words. But in early 2014, the girl who loved school stopped showing up. Her multiple absences from class, more than 30 days, tipped off a social worker that something was wrong. But it was already too late. A police report shows it had been three weeks since Shamika Young last saw Relisha. A mother of four, it wasn't unusual for her to leave her children with family members. Shamika Young has not had an easy life. She says she felt abandoned by her own mother, her childhood, a series of foster homes and shelters. She remembers the day when she learned Relisha wasn't coming home. Did you think she would be found right away? Um, honestly, yes, I did. Yes, I did. All I can say about that is, hmm, they ain't do a good enough job for me. Point blank, period. Police discovered the last known person to see Relisha alive was the man in this surveillance video, the janitor at the shelter, Khalil Tatum. He befriended the little girl and her family against shelter policy. He bought Relisha presents, including a Kindle. Court records show he may have been posing as a doctor to excuse her absences from school. Relisha is a lovable person. In an interview last year, Relisha's grandmother told us he often offered to take Relisha away from the shelter, a place the child despised. When I met him, he was friendly. She claims she didn't know Tatum well, but felt safe with him. Relisha never came back and said she was harmed. I can easily pick up a danger sign, but when I was around him, I didn't pick up any of that. But police called Tatum a killer. During the days after Relisha disappeared, authorities say he shot and killed his wife in a hotel room outside of town. Detectives rushed there looking for Relisha. Instead, they found Tatum's wife with a bullet wound in her head. A massive search zeroed in on a nearby park and a body in a storage building. It was Khalil Tatum, a victim of suicide. Still no sign of the little girl. We cannot um, ignore the possibility that he may have killed her. 
that suspicion that Tatum killed Relisha Rudd then took his own life is not shared by Shamika Young. She refuses to believe that the man in the surveillance tape, the friendly janitor from the shelter, hurt her child. Do you think he did something to Relisha? No, I don't. You don't? I don't think he did nothing. In, in my eyes, as a mother, I would have felt it. I, I just, I can't accept that as an answer. I don't. A detective from D.C.'s Computer Crimes Unit, which investigates sexual exploitation of children, confiscated an iPad and work papers from Tatum's locker. Detectives also found children's clothing and a photo of Relisha Rudd at his Washington, D.C. home. But police refused to explain how those items impact the case, if at all. On Relisha's ninth birthday, seven months after she disappeared, the police chief held a press conference, but gave no indication detectives were any closer to finding Relisha. There's a lot of investigative work going on, and because we're doing that work jointly with the United States Attorney's Office, we're prohibited from getting any details about some of the work that's been going on. We got a late start on Relisha, um, and that late start hurt us. Do you think she's alive? My hope is that she's alive. Community leaders, meanwhile, have wondered whether Relisha was the victim of sex trafficking and raised questions about her grandmother and mother's involvement. Relisha's grandmother denies it. Me, nor my daughter, did not sell her baby. For months, Relisha's family has come under fire for failing to keep a closer eye on the child they loved. Remember, parents have a responsibility also. And, and the parents, you know, the, the mother and the grandmother certainly played a role. Uh, and for being less than forthcoming about the chain of events surrounding Relisha's disappearance. When you found out that Relisha went missing, did you call the police? Didn't I say, I, did I not just sit here and say, um, when I found out she went missing, I, didn't, I couldn't think? Why didn't you call the police? If my mind went blank and I, like, went into shock, I'm not thinking straight. People ask me. Well, who called the police to say she was missing? We don't even know that. We didn't have a phone at the time. Many in the community think the family knows more than it's saying. If there is a chance right now to find your daughter, do you think you have information that could help find her? No, I do not. So what do you say when people ask you, did you have anything to do with Relisha's uh, Me personally, I don't even answer nobody. I don't have to explain myself to nobody but the Lord. That's all that matters to me. So when people ask me, I don't even answer them because I don't have nothing to explain. After Relisha went missing, Shamika Young's three other children were put in foster care. She says she feels attacked by the media and victimized by the detectives handling the case. I believe they're not doing anything because at the moment we was homeless, poor, and we're colored people. But if we was like first class, rich, with a lot of money, living famous, they would have did more. What do you want the police to know? I am a mother of a missing child and I feel like y'all should treat me like any other parents that have a child missing out here. In email after email, the Washington, D.C. police repeatedly refused our requests for sit-down interviews with the lead investigators and police chief Kathy Lanier, saying the case is open and under investigation. Chief, one quick question about Relisha Rudd. We caught up with Lanier at an unrelated news conference. Her mother says she's been treated unfairly by the police and that if her child was white and wealthy, that the police would be doing more. What is your response to that? Well, I mean... Uh, a mother who is uh, speaking on behalf of a missing child, uh, I'm sure, is in a great deal of pain, and I certainly understand that. We are continuing our investigation for Valicia Rudd. We have exhausted a lot of resources, and we will continue to do so. But uh, I'm not going to react to a comment like that uh, any other way than to say that every child matters to us. Police won't call it a cold case, and they say they're still investigating, but they seem to have hit a wall. Shamika Young is living in an apartment now where she says she's hoping Relisha will come home. If you could talk to Relisha, what would you say? Um, if I could talk to my daughter right now, I would tell her that I love you. And for her to tell whoever got you, let you go because they're holding you against your will. Meanwhile, the finger pointing continues over who failed Relisha Rudd. 
Next in our special report, Remembering Relisha. What would she be telling you right now, what do you think? Michelle, come on, let's do our chairs. The friends keeping her spirit alive and the suspicions about those who might have protected her. The family is the key to solving this case. Somebody knows more. America Tonight investigates the search for Relisha. Gone, but not forgotten. If Relisha Rudd is still alive, and those closest to her believe that she is, she would now be nine years old. It's hard to keep the faith against a raft of unanswered questions, doubts that even her family is telling all it knows, and a police investigation that has so far come up empty. America Tonight's Lori Jane Gleha now continues her investigation with the people who refuse to give up hope. Five, six, seven, eight. an empty school hallway. Cheer coach Shannon Smith tries to fill some of the emptiness left in her heart. I miss her hug, I miss her laugh, her smile, you know, just wrapping her little arms around me and just saying thank you. Relisha Rudd was one of her students and would have loved to learn these new routines. Relisha! What would she be telling you right now, what do you think? Michelle, come on, let's do our chairs. She was fun, and every time she messed up, she was still she would smile, get that big smile on her face, and keep going. When Relisha Rudd disappeared a year ago, community members like Smith took it upon themselves to keep Relisha's memory alive. Every few months, Smith distributes new shirts with Relisha's face printed on the front, and does anything she can to turn the sad reminders of the missing child into positive energy and hope. Instead of me having them walking around feeling so sad about her being gone, we pretty much put them to work, let them cheer. I let them express themselves by shouting it out. We love you, Alicia. A lot of them holds it in. And then some of them are scared. They don't know who to trust and who not to trust. It's hard. Let me hear that part. Dear Alicia. But I'm going to keep her alive. If I have to do this every, every day, every month, I believe she's coming back. Smith says the police haven't done enough to find her former student. And she's not the only one to lose faith in the investigation. A handful of concerned citizens are doing their own detective work independent of police. All righty, guys, we are live for uh, the Search for Relisha radio show. Keith Warren is one of those citizen detectives. There's a piece of this puzzle that's missing. Warren is the creator and host of the Search for Relisha radio show. The main goal is to find Relisha. Warren didn't know Relisha Rudd, but when he learned the little girl was missing, it struck close to home. His cousin disappeared in 2010. This time, he says, he wanted to do something that would make a difference. This child has to be found. You know, we believe that the police and everything have given up, you know, but the community's not given up on finding her. On Thursday nights, Warren takes calls from concerned community members. Let's make some noise for this baby girl, because honestly, she didn't have a voice. What do you think is the key to solving this case? The family. The family is the key to solving this case. Somebody knows more, because we've seen, we've heard so many different stories and so many, you know, stories have flipped. Relisha's family is aware of the accusations, and some of them have even called in. John Air. This is Antonio. This is Relisha's daddy. You are bashing my family, bashing my kid's mother. I ask you to stop. If the focus on Relisha, let's focus on Relisha. It's got to a point now where I don't know who to believe. I bashed the family. A year ago, Brenda Brown felt the same way. At the time, she was also suspicious that Relisha's mother had something to do with her own daughter's disappearance. I was just as angry and upset and judgmental as everybody else. Brown was a complete stranger who never met Relisha Rudd or her family, and she posted nasty comments about the family online. Did you ever read any of the stuff I wrote about you? Okay, good. But then one day, she volunteered to help search for Relisha and met Shamika Young. She had nobody, and I was just drawn to that. 
Now she runs the We Are Relisha Facebook page and even arranged to have a search dog to help sniff around the park where police had already searched for Relisha. I'm not going to stop until I am satisfied that everything has been done and I am way from satisfied. Brown helped Young find her new apartment after the city forced her out of the homeless shelter. Young, who grew up bouncing between foster homes and shelters, now sees Brown as a mother figure. I've never really had this much support before. It made me feel like a newborn baby to have a fresh mother that can help me start from the beginning of my life you and never bring it said up. That. You feel like a newborn baby? I feel like a newborn baby with oh. a mother. Well, Relisha's mother clings to hope she is alive. This Brenda Brown is not as optimistic. Police stopped searching the rivers and parks months ago, but that hasn't stopped the search for clues by so many community supporters. People like Brenda Brown, Keith Warren, and Shannon Smith, people who say they won't give up until the case of the missing girl is finally solved. Next in our special report, America Tonight investigates the pledges and broken promises in the search for Relisha. Are you confident that kids there today are safer than they were a year ago when Relisha Rudd went missing? America Tonight's Lori Jane Gleha and her tough questions to DC leaders. But are they safer? I have answered your question. It's an unsolved mystery and a sharp indictment of how a city that prides itself on its power treats its most vulnerable. Here, families, even little children, have for years been warehoused in a building never meant to be a shelter, a facility politicians keep promising to shut down. You might think that after eight-year-old Relisha Rudd fell through the gaping cracks of this safety net, city leaders would finally have made good on their promises. But then, you'd be wrong. America Tonight's Lori Jane Gleha follows up now with the city that failed Relisha Rudd. This old hospital building was once home for eight-year-old Relisha Rudd and her mother, Shamika Young. It's a mess. To be honest with you, it's no place for children, unfortunately. How many people were packed in a room, in your room? Oh, it was six of us. In 2013, the family was among nearly 300 others living at D.C. General, Washington's largest family homeless shelter. At the time, it housed nearly 600 children. It's a stone's throw from a drug rehab center and a city jail. Not an ideal place for kids, says Jamila Larson, who runs an independent play program for homeless children. They go through security every every day to, just to get into the shelter. They eat in a cafeteria. It's very institutional and it might be loud or you know chaotic, very different from their from the privacy of their own home. It's a very stressful place for children and families to be. Jim Graham is the former head of DC's Human Services Committee charged with shelter oversight. There were people who let, who let the Rudd family down. And you know, it takes two hands to clap. I'm sure that there were, there were family members who were in there clapping, you know, and bearing their part of the responsibility. But there was definitely a responsibility by the D.C. government that, that wasn't met. After Relisha went missing, he held hearings revealing massive concerns about the safety of children at the shelter. There are a lot of different things involved here, but the bottom line was that we failed. He found incident reports showing weapons, assaults, and drugs at D.C. General. He also found four staff members had been fired for inappropriate relationships with residents. When are we going to close this thing? Because we had the former director of this department say, D.C. General is dead. I've made it very clear that by the end of, of September, the mayor would have from my office a plan as to how we will go about closing D.C. General. And the hearings culminated in a government promise to shut down the shelter. One year after Relisha disappeared, the shelter is still open, still home to nearly 200 families. There were rats, there's roaches, um, essential things like toilet tissue and soap, um, they run out a lot. Um, and just the overall feel, you, you feel like you're being um, 
more like a halfway house. Tamika Smalls says she lived at D.C. General for a few months with her kids after the house she was renting foreclosed. She says D.C. General was dirty and cramped. These are pictures of her children in her room, packed with six beds. For the younger children, it's harder. You have a bunch of children that they feel like they're in a pig pen, so they're running around, they're hollering and screaming. So if you, if you didn't have to do it, I would have wished it on my worst enemy. In one of the nation's wealthiest cities, more than 30% of children live below the poverty line. I, th I think we've had an explosion in family homelessness. And I think probably the major issue there is the economy. And the fact that homeless families, poor, poor families, are no longer able to make it in this city. Much of that is due to a lack of affordable housing. New construction of luxury units with higher rents is pushing thousands of people, many of them young families, into the city's shelters and overflow hotels. Smalls and her children are among them. She now lives in a city paid for hotel with her family. You have um, new buyers coming in, fixing up um, your great grandmother's home. Um, but it's too expensive for you to move in. The economy, the prices of everything has gone up, so where I was able to get um, a five-bedroom for 2800 that same five-bedroom in that same neighborhood is now $4,000. Multiple D.C. mayors have vowed to end homelessness. After Relisha disappeared, former Mayor Vincent Gray promised to find new homes for 500 shelter families within 100 days. The city moved fewer than 200 families by the deadline. Um, and, thank them. and now Mayor Muriel Bowser is pledging to end homelessness by 2025. Mayor, can you tell me why anyone in the community should have faith that this plan will work when so many previous administrations have tried to fix the problem of homelessness in D.C. and have been unsuccessful. Uh, we know that we're dealing with a very tough issue uh, and it is incumbent upon all of us, uh, me who is you know, just over 40 days in office or maybe not quite 40 days in office, to look at the programs that have worked and make them, and make them better. And are you confident that kids there today are safer than they were a year ago when Relisha Rudd went missing. I, I don't think that any of us can be happy when we have such a large facility where families are living. Uh, D.C. General was built as a hospital, and as such, it is not um, the, the optimal environment uh, to raise families. But are they safer? I, I've answered your question. It is not much safer this year than last year, because we have not... What, what it would take to really make D.C. General function is a wraparound services of the type that would cost more than the city is willing to pay for right now. Just a quick question about Hi. Relisha Rudd. Thank because you, she has to go. How, actually, we wanted to see firsthand what kind of place it is for a child, and we've been asking to get in for nearly a year. But city officials walked away from us. We wanted to see if we could get into the um, D.C. General to see it, because there have been, and I wanted to know how many recommendations have been put into place. Are you sure you'll follow up? Because no. The city has yet to answer our questions or let us into the shelter. Though the process is slow, D.C. General has seen some improvements since Relisha Rudd disappeared. There are two more security guards, a new attendance protocol, and there's a new playground making the shelter a little more child-friendly. Her abduction really shed light on this population of invisible children at D.C. General, so it really compelled um, D.C. to finally realize that there's a small town uh, or small city of children living here without access to a safe place to play like so many other children in our city have. So thanks to Relisha, the children now at D.C. General have that playground. How sad is that that you are sitting here saying, thanks to Relisha, we now have a playground. I mean, it's heartbreaking. I mean, this isn't just a problem unique to D.C. One in 30 children in the U.S. now experience homelessness in any given year. Relisha Rudd's disappearance is another very sad example of what it takes sometimes to galvanize public opinion. When Relisha Rudd disappeared, the whole outlook changed. But homeless advocates say the recent changes at D.C. General just scratched the surface. I don't know anyone who thinks D.C. General is a great place that needs to stay indefinitely at a shelter. It's really a matter of community will. Like, let's integrate families who experience homelessness in our community into smaller apartment-based shelters. The biggest fear 
Not enough has been done to keep another child like Relisha Rudd from slipping through the cracks. As correspondent Lori Jane Gleha revealed, the system failed her. But we will continue to follow up. Thanks for joining us for this special report. Next time on our program, the mysterious disappearance of Misty Upham, the Native American actress, a breakout role, and 